Okay, so today is Wednesday. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Uh, so, uh, last time we discussed the uh, notion of uh, stabilization, and we were talking about some classical invariants like thurston Banneken number and rotation number, and uh, uh, we ended up discussing the notion of uh, chikanov Elliotberg algebra. So, uh, <clears throat> what do we do? Uh, we basically consider a Legendrian knot living in R3 with a standard contact form dz minus y dx. So, to this Legendrian knot, we associate a set of rib chords, Q lambda. So, it's a set of rib chords. The other way to say is that it's a set of trajectories of rib vector field which in this particular situation is d over dz which start and end on our Legendrian submanifold lambda. And the last thing, it's the same thing as a, uh, the set of double points. The set of double points of the Lagrangian projection pi L of lambda. Let me say that the set is non-empty. And the set generically is finite. So generically, the set Q lambda is finite. Now, chikanov Elliotberg algebra that we denote by A lambda is a unital non-commutative differential graded algebra over, let's say, Z2, freely generated by rib chords. Right. Well, our set Q lambda. Okay. So it's a tensor algebra. Unital means there is, that there is a unit. Non-commutative means that the elements of Q lambda do not commute. Now, it's a differential graded algebra. So there is a certain grading, right? So last time I uh, talked a bit about the uh, definition of grading. Let me provide another way to, uh, actually more general way of describing this. So uh, I'll use Lagrangian projection. So, how do, how do we define the gradient? So, I will define the gradient first for Q lambda, and then we will extend it. So, let's say we have some C, element of Q lambda, some rib chord, and uh, this, to this C we associate two points, C plus, and C minus, two points in R3, which are 
end points. Of Kulan. Uh, such that the Z coordinate of C plus is bigger than the Z coordinate of C minus. Okay. So if you take a Lagrangian projection, C plus will be the point in the overstrand, and C minus will be the point in the understrand. So if you take some uh, double point, right, in the Lagrangian projection, in pi L lambda, then C plus, so this is our C, right, our double point, our chord, and C plus will correspond to something living on the overstrand, and C minus will be something living on the understrand. Okay, um, <clears throat> then what do we do? We choose a path. We choose a path uh, that we denote by gamma C. Uh, pass on our lambda that parameterizes arc uh, from so running from C plus to C minus. So basically, if this is a picture of our lambda, and you remember that lambda is a Legendrian knot, namely it's S1 living in R3, right? We have a chord, right? We have a chord and it has two endpoints, C plus and C minus. And we choose some paths running from C plus to C minus. Of course, in this case, we have two possibilities. We can either choose this red path or we can choose this uh, yellow path. And at the moment, we just choose some path. We just say we choose something, okay? So, gamma C. Then using this pass, so we get a map, then we get a map that I'll denote by GC, it will be a map from 0 to pi to P, where this is a projectivized. Uh, projectivized unit circle. Uh, basically, it's a unit circle where we identify antipodal points. Uh, defined by so GC of T is equal to is equal to a uh, gamma dot. T at T divided by the uh, absolute value of gamma dot uh, uh, C at T. I mean, it's actual norm. So this way we have a GC, right? We get this type of map. And uh, what do we do? So observe that. C is a double point, is a transverse double point.
and hence we can extend GC uh, to a map I'll still call it GC but this will be a map from S1 to P uh, given by rotating GC at P clockwise until it agrees with uh, GC at zero. Okay? And then we so then we define the gradient of C to be the degree of such map. Okay? So let's draw a picture. Let's draw a picture. This is a part of the Lagrangian projection of lambda. Once again, we take a path which starts, so we, here we have some C, some double point, okay? There are two strands, this over strand and under strand. On the over strand we have the C plus, on the under strand we have C minus. We are going from the over strand to under strand. We take some pass. Let's assume that we take we take basically this pass, this yellow pass. Okay. This is our gamma C. And now what do we do? So we take the uh, uh, we take the uh, tangent map, unit tangent map. And we are going, we are going, we are going, we are going. And uh, we are coming here, okay? And then what do we do? We rotate clockwise, okay? And now observe that we have a map to the projectivized circle, right? So uh, basically, as you see, the degree of such map with the rotation is 1, right? So the gradient uh, of C will be 1. Uh, so this way we define the gradient on the rib chords and then we extend it towards. So how do we define differential? So once again, we will define this differential on the chords and then we will extend it by linearity and Leibniz rule. Okay? So just to recall, so once again, we will define it, we will define it first for Q lambda and then extend by linearity. by linearity, linearity and Leibniz rule so which is d of a b will be d a b uh, plus minus 1 to the uh, gradient of a a d b okay 
Now you can say, well, well, we are considering co coefficients over z2. I mean, why do we have minus 1 to some power? Minus 1 is 1 in, in the case of z2. It is true, but uh, to be honest, this algebra can be defined with the more sophisticated coefficients, and this type of thing will be useful. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> what's the differential? In order to compute differential, we will count certain uh, polygons in the Lagrangian projection, immersed polygons. So, uh, what exactly do we do? Let's say, uh, once again, we take C, okay, we take ripcord C, and uh, we take a, a neighborhood of C, so neighborhood of C, in R2, So we are talking, of course, about like Lagrangian projection of lambda, right? So in R2, will be divided into, so is uh, neighborhood of C, let's say, uh, will be divided, will be divided, divided into four uh, parts, four quadrants. labeled the following way. The following way. Plus, plus, minus, minus. Okay. And then what do we do? So, uh, now we take uh, take let's say C plus and C1 minus CK minus rip quartz and consider p k plus 1 which is a k plus 1 sided polygon these vertices labeled counterclockwise V0, V1, Vk and set plus C1 minus CK minus to be the set of maps of this K plus 1 uh, gone uh, to R2 such that the boundary of this uh, K plus 1 gone leaves on the Lagrangian projection of lambda, okay, with the property that uh, u satisfies uh, conditions uh, 
I'll write one, two, three, and I'll, uh, I'll mention them later. So sat satisfies conditions one, two, three. You consider these maps up to reparametrization. And these conditions one, two, three are reparametrization. Reparametrization. And these conditions one, two, three are the following. So condition one. Condition one says that U is an immersion. So we are considering immersed uh, K plus one gons. Condition two says that U at V zero is equal to a uh, C plus. And, uh, and near and uh, uh, and near C plus uh, the image of a small neighborhood. of V0 uh, covers uh, a plus quadrant. So basically one vertex will leave at C plus. Sorry for the confusion. So when I when I, when I talked about this, the gradient, I had C and C plus and C minus were points on the overstrand and understrand. And here C plus is a chord. It's not a point. It's a chord. We consider yeah we consider C plus and C one minus C can C K minus chords. So this is a chord, right? Not a point, but a chord. So so one one vertex of this K plus one god will be at C plus at this chord C plus. And uh, near C plus, so near this double point on the Lagrangian projection, so the neighborhood of V zero will live in the plus quadrant. Okay. And uh, condition three says that U of V i is a C i minus. where i is from 1 to k and near and near c i minus the image of u of a small neighborhood of a small neighborhood small neighborhood of uh, VI covers a minus quadrant. Okay. So, for example, on this type of picture, right, this is a plus plus, minus, and minus. If I would like to write DC so if I would like to write DC I will see the following one gone. Okay. So DC will be will be one plus maybe we have something else. Why do I write one? Because I have a one gone, I do not see anything which covers minus. Uh, minus sign, right? So, a priori, if I don't have any minus corners, I write one. Okay. 
So I'll draw, uh, we will do uh, more complicated examples and you will see more complicated K plus one gons. Uh, so let's do the basic example. So we consider the following Lagrangian projection. So let, let me write example one. We will take a Lagrangian projection of the Legendrian knot, which looks like which looks like this. There is no holomorphic condition. It's a completely combinatorial definition. No holomorphicity, nothing. So, so far we just in the world where we count stuff and we don't care about any holomorphic condition. So, in this particular picture, we see two double points. So, let me call them A1 and A2. So the set of rib chords Q lambda consists of A1 and A2. Sorry for the sound. Uh, so let's see what is the grading of this A1 and A2. So let's start with A1. For A1 it's absolutely the same story as we had here. So once again, we start with the overstrand and we go Okay, so we take this pass, this uh, pass, uh, this yellow pass and we go all the way and then we move clockwise so absolutely, in the absolutely the same manner, the gradient of A1 is 1. What about A2? So for simplicity, I'll take this pass. So once again, we take overstrand and we go. And then we move clockwise. And it's still one, so we take one, we, we have one rotation. So the degree is one. Now what about differential? So once again, we have plus, plus, minus, and minus. Plus, plus, minus, and minus. Okay. Now, for A1, uh, for A1, it will be basically only this one, one gone. Uh, you can say, well, is there any algorithm to see what's the deal? Unfortunately, there is no algorithm. It's just a matter of sitting, playing, and trying to see the immersed polygons. And sometimes there are some mistakes, but you know, it's a matter of sitting and trying. For A2, this will be the following. This will be the following uh, uh, one gone. So basically, it's D of A1 is 1 and D of A2 is also 1. Let's do more complicated example and more interesting one. And also it makes sense to observe that if you have a differential graded algebra, right? Later, we would like to consider the homology of this algebra. The homology of this algebra will be a Legendrian invariant. 
and if d of some generator is equal to 1, what are the consequences of this fact? What can we say about the homology in this case? It doesn't survive. It doesn't survive, right. So the homology in this case will be 0. So if we see that the d on some generator is equal to 1, then the homology vanishes. Okay, so example 2. Now we will consider something more complicated. Actually, uh, we will take a trefoil. Sorry. Um. So we take a trefoil. So this is our pi L lambda. So this trefoil has five double points. Let me call them A1, A2, B1, B2, and B3. Okay. So we can say that Q lambda consists of A1, A2, B1, B2, and B3. Okay. Now we need to compute the gradient of these generators. So As we saw in the previous examples, like, do we know how to compute the gradients of A1 and A2? What will be the gradient? Any analogy? Please? One. One. Great. Good idea. So once again, you do the same type of thing. Go, 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 go. Rotate clockwise and you get one. Go, 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 go. Go clock and then you get clockwise and you get one. Now what about B1, B2 and B3? Now it's slightly more complicated. So uh, let me take uh, let me take red color. So for B uh, let's let's start with B3 because it's <laughs> basically the let's start with B3. So for B3, I will take the following red pass. Okay. So what do I do? I go, 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 go. So I rotate basically one direction. Then I get all the way here and then I rotate clockwise. Okay, so if I do it this way, then we see that the uh, degree is zero, correct? So the degree of B3 is equal to zero. Exercise. Try to compute the degree of B1 and B2. And uh, in order to be a good teacher, I need to provide the answer so that you can check it. So the degree of B1 and B2 must be zero as well. So exercise shows that the degree of B1 and B2 is also zero. Okay, now let's see what's the I have a question. So, like, if, I mean, if there is no like algorithm, like, how do we des decide whether, like, what we did at the end, what we came up with at the end, is like correct or not? Like, that. Or <laughs> it's just a question. <laughs> <laughs> Telling us how to compute something. I mean, I see. So, like in, 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 uh, I, I guess. It, 
Like so the question is, is there, is there any simpler way to compute it so that first you compute and then you say, okay, so whatever I compute yeah, in a I different guess. way is incorrect. <laughs> but this is like a shortcut, you know, like, I mean, I don't, I, I, unfortunately, I don't know like any clear indications. If you just give me a diagram uh -huh. and say compute something, and then I compute something and give it to you. Yeah. And then you have independently the same diagram and you compute it and you have a different answer, right? Yeah. And the question is like, who is right? Unfortunately, I don't know. We need to talk and see what are the curves that you use and what are the curves that I use, you know? And maybe we are both incorrect. Okay. So, so in the end of the day, it's just a matter of really checking on all, possible, all possibilities. And a priori, like combinatorially and uh, even geometrically, this problem is not that easy. So, uh, so what is definitely true if you know something extra about your Legendrian knot, for example, if you heard something about exact Lagrangian feelings, if you know that it admits, you don't know so far, but let's say you heard that you know this type of thing exists for your knot, then it would be impossible to have a situation when the algebra is uh, acyclic or the homology vanishes. Yeah, like if you do compute stuff and you see that you know it's a cyclic, then whatever you are doing is not completely correct. Mm -hmm. You know, so one way to verify something is like you can do simple Legendrian isotopes and then do for Yes, right? yes, oh. yes. Yeah, you you can do this. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's try to uh, compute some. Uh, let's try to compute the differential. So I need to say the following, in order not to struggle too much. You see, the grading of AIs is one. The gradient of BIs is zero, right? Whatever we would like to define uh, will be a homology in the end. So differential will decrease the degree. So with this type of definition, we don't have anything of degree minus one, right? So you can, of course, struggle and try to find some, uh, some K plus one gons you know, which start from B's. But I will tell you right away that they do not exist, right? So with this type of theory, they do not exist. So I will not do monkey business and struggle for nothing. Okay, so, uh, so D will decrease the degree So we can say that D of B i's is equal to zero. And now we need to compute, we are left only with A i's. And we want to compute uh, what is the D of A1 and D of A2. Right, so let's start with A1. If you want to check this fact, is that easy to check? Is it easy to check uh, what? You said that no, you look at only zero. That's right. No, no, bounding and um, decrease this. So you ask me if I want to prove that differential decreases the degree and how to prove it. That's that's your question? I mean, if you say in that way, it's trivial. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so. There is an honest proof that with a combinatorial definition, differential decreases the degree. But uh, let me not get into this. Now, if you want, we can, we can discuss it after the talk. Yes, yes, yes. yes. There, is honest, there is an honest proof of that. And it was proven. It's, I mean, uh, Chikanov, when he... So this combinatorial version is due to Yuri Chikanov. And uh, when he constructed this algebra, 
there was the honest proof the differential decreases the degree that d square is equal to zero and whatever we define it will be invariant up to all the choices the only thing is like when we talk about grading so the grading is defined up to two times the rotation number so a priori it's not an absolute grading but if you know that the rotation number vanishes then you will have a z grade okay so let's try to compute d of a1 so what are the curves that we see so for that uh, we need to have a picture so the first component that we see is of course let me put some colors close to the board so that I don't walk okay so once again plus plus minus minus first we see this guy right so we see one gone without any negative end and okay this means that there will be contribution of one okay then uh, I need another picture So I'll draw only part of the knot. Okay, so this is my A1. B1, B2, B3. So B3, B2, B1. Plus, plus, minus, minus. Plus, plus, minus, minus. Plus, plus, minus, minus. Plus, plus, minus, minus. And uh, now I take the following two gone. I start from A1. I get all the way to B1. And then I get back. Namely, we have two gone. With a plus at A1. And one minus at B1. Okay. So this means that we will have a contribution of B1. Now the next guy, uh, maybe I can use the same picture but with a different color. Okay. I'll also start from A1. I'll go like this, like this, get to B3 and then get back so this way I get a 2 gone with a plus at A1 and minus at B3 okay. Okay. so I can say that there is a contribution of B1 and also there is a contribution of B3 and for the last one I'll draw a uh, another picture um. so this is a B is one B2 B3 A1 plus plus minus minus plus plus minus minus plus plus minus minus plus plus minus minus okay. and then what do I do I start from A1 I move all the way to B1 then I move all the way to B2 then I move all the way to B3 And what will be the contribution? Will it be B3, B2, B1? Or B1, B2, B3? B1, B2, B3. Why? The third. Because we are going counterclockwise. Counterclockwise. Okay. Because you know, we are having non commutative algebra. So if you make a mistake, if you tell me that we have B2, B3, B2, B1, then our answers will be different. 
a priori. So uh, the contribution will be uh, B1, B2, B3. So the formula for our D of A1. OK, I had a Japanese advisor. And Japanese people, they write uh, <laughs> vertically. <laughs> so I'll write it this way, OK? <laughs> so I'll write, it will be 1 plus B1 plus B3 plus B1, B2, B3. Now, what about uh, A2? So now I have A2 here. And uh, on this side, I have B1, B2, and B3. Okay. Now, once again, plus, plus, minus, minus, plus, plus, minus, minus, plus, plus, minus, minus, plus, plus, minus, minus. So, will we have contribution of 1 for A2? Yes. The answer is yes by the same type of one gone, namely this red one gone, will give us contribution of one. I'll use uh, okay, the same picture for another creature. So let's say we start from A2, and then we go here, 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 all the way to B1, and now we get back. So this way we get a contribution of B1. And now... Plus, plus, minus, minus, plus, plus, minus, minus, plus, plus, minus, minus, plus, plus, minus, minus. Now the next guy. So we start from, once again, so it's A2. So this is B3, B2, B1. We start from A2. We get to B3, minus. And then we go this way, 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 and we get back. Okay? So this way we get a contribution of B3. Okay? And I'll use the red color in order to get the contribution of the last guy. So we start from A2, we go to B3, we go to B2, we go to B1, and then we get back. Okay. And this red creature gives us a contribution of B3, B2, B1 in this order, in counterclockwise order. And coincidentally, on this board, we have the same thing. So today we have a Japanese lesson. <laughs> so <laughs> D of A2 will be 1 plus B1 plus B3 and uh, plus uh, B3, B2, B1. Okay. 
So we compute the differential of all chords and then we can extend it. Then you can say, well, well, I mean, so far we have all these beautiful uh, K plus one gons and uh, they look embedded. Why do we talk about immersed ones? I mean, why in the definition uh, we are considering immersed guys? So can you provide some picture? And I will provide it in a second. So in particular, so consider, it's like example three. So we have P L lambda given the following way. So here we have uh, so Q of our lambda consists of all right this uh, this double point will be Q1 this double point will be Q2 this double point will be Q3 so lambda uh, Q of lambda will be Q1 Q2 Q3. And so the main point is that when we try to compute the differential of uh, Q3, right? So of course, plus plus minus minus uh, plus plus minus minus plus plus minus minus. Okay. So of course, we will see something basic. So we will see is this type of guy. Okay. And also, we will see some interesting guy. Okay. You will see some immersed guy. Let me try to uh, explain how it looks like. So we start from here. We go like this, like this, like this, like this, all the way here, 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 here. We are going here, we are going here, and then we are getting back. So basically, I'll try to shadow it. OK. So it's like a tone, you know, or uh, yeah, exactly that Salman shows. <laughs> some, yes, you, you can show it the same way. So, so you'll see some immersed, <laughs> you'll see some immersed disk with one positive, uh, you'll see some one gone, which is immersed, okay? So what is interesting in this particular case, you'll have the due of Q1, you'll be first contribution of this guy, so it's one, plus another one, and we are playing over t Z2, so this is zero. Are you Q3? Are you Q3 or Q1? Uh, oh, sorry, Q3. Yes, thanks a lot. So this is zero. And uh, now... What's the D of Q3? Zero. If you have something like this, yeah. right, then the degree is... One. one. But there's also other... What? No, you want to one. One. one yeah, yes. So it's one. But uh, exercise, finish the calculation. And uh, in order to be a good teacher, I need to say that I need to provide an answer. So D of Q2 is supposed to be one, and D of uh, Q1 is supposed to be zero. So check it. OK. OK, so we have a. Today we see this uh, combinatorial version of the chikanov elersberg algebra. And now, what Chikanov, so why this algebra is interesting? What Chikanov proved about this algebra? So, um, how much time is, uh, how much time do you have? Six minutes. Six minutes, perfect. So I can say something substantial. And this something will be the following. So Chikanov didn't just prove that if you take the homology of this algebra, then it's a Legendrian invariant. But he actually say how the algebra changes if you apply Legendrian isotopy. So, uh, 
So to discuss invariant of this algebra, so like let's talk about invariance of this A lambda D, right? I need to say the following. So we need the following definition. So an automorphism of a lambda of the form uh, so phi uh, j of ci which is ci if i is uh, different from j and plus or minus cj plus u where u lives in the algebra uh, generated by c1, cj minus 1, cj plus 1, I don't know, cn. These are all possible chords, but we forget about chord cj. Basically, we have all chords but cj. Uh, and this is for i equals j, right? So this type of automorphism is called uh, is called elementary then a composition of such automorphisms is called tame automorphism so a composition of composition of elementary automorphisms is called tame is called thing uh, then um, a tame isomorphism of two algebras It's basically when you have two algebras at first you identify the generators and then you do tame automorphisms. So it's a composition of first uh, identification of generators and then tame automorphisms. Could you tell me the second one? I missed it. Second, uh, so this type I, of... I equal to J. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So if I is equal to J, then phi J of CI... CJ. Uh, yes, of CJ basically, yeah. is CJ plus U, yeah. where U is a word which doesn't have CJ as a letter. Yeah, That's what it says. So it lives in the algebra without CJ basically. It could be any word. It can be some, I mean, it could be, uh, yeah, it could be any word. Okay. I mean, not everything is the auto, I mean, if, if I write just any word, it will not be a priori like auto, nice automorphism, but you know, all automorphisms of this form will be called elementary. So if I have something like that of this form, then it will be called auto, uh, uh, elementary, okay? And then the composition of such guys will be called tame automorphism. And then tame isomorphism of two algebras will be uh, given by first identification, identification, of generators of two algebras of two algebras uh, followed by tame uh, automorphism okay so now what we know, well now we know what is the elementary automorphism, tame automorphism, and tame isomorphism. And now uh, another thing is so-called stabilization. So in the end we will talk about stable tame uh, isomorphisms. So an index i stabilization of a 
DGA. So DGA means d d differential graded algebra. For simplicity, I write DGA. Uh, a lambda d is a. Uh, let me write this guy as a c1 cn. So these are all uh, all generators, right? So I just write all generators. So is a graded algebra. So is the algebra is the uh, differential graded algebra dj a uh, c1 cn where I add two generators a and b, okay, with a property that degree of a is equal to the degree of b minus one is equal to i, okay, and differential of a is equal to zero, differential of b is equal to uh, is equal to a, and differential on c's is the same differential as the differential in the original algebra. And d of this ci's is the same thing as a, I don't know, maybe I can write old here. So this will be as d old ci, okay? So this is a notion of stabilizations. Now we say that two, DG, two DGAs are stable team isomorphic. So stable team isomorphic. Uh, if after stabilizing each other, If after stabilizing, stabilizing each of each of them, whatever some number of times maybe like some number of times, so we, we may take like I stabilization and J stabilization and blah blah blah, and for each of them there will be a sequence of stabilizations. Okay, uh, they will become each of them let's say some number of times. of times, uh, they will become, so they become, become tame isomorphic. And the theorem of Chekhanov If I'm not mistaken, I hope I'm not mistaken, this is 2002. So it was proven in 2002 and uh, the paper uh, was written uh, before that. So it says that the DGA, or maybe let me remove 2002 since it's videotaped, you know, <laughs> in order to not to leave any sign of incorrect number if it's incorrect. <laughs> so, so what I'm saying is that the DGA a lambda d changes by stable team isomorphism under Legendrian isotopy. And uh, moreover, H, so the homology of this algebra, is unchanged under Legendrian isotopy. Namely, it's a Legendrian invariant. So once again, the theorem doesn't just say that the homology is the same, but it actually says how the uh, algebra changes, right? 
If you apply Legendrian isotopy, the algebra changes in a very specific controlled way. Okay? And basically Chicano has this description of changes under Reidemeister moves. So whenever you consider Legendrian Reidemeister moves, he has a precise description of what happens actually with the algebra. Okay, uh, thanks a lot for your attention.